Well, I'm sure you're wondering where I've been the past, like, what, seven months now? Mostly, uh, just been busy with, you know, the firehouse and doing yard work and working on my cars. The weather's been very nice, so I haven't really been in the house all that much working on the trains. Um, so, yeah, my apologies for that. I did get a couple of new things, though. I got an MTH DCS system, finally. Been waiting for that for the longest time. I've been slowly piecing it together. Uh, currently at Greenberg's Train Show in Edison, New Jersey. My goal today is to try and find a TMCC command base so I can link the Lionel trains that I have with my DCS system. All you need is that and you need the bridge plug. So that's probably gonna be the rare thing. It's probably in here somewhere. So we're gonna do some hunting, maybe get some more odds and ends stuff and uh, get right back into it. Let's go. Boy, am I a happy camper. Wait until you see this. Well, so for the most part, I actually got what I was looking for. Got my Lionel command base for only $40. Can't beat that. I am missing the uh, AC adapter plug that goes into the wall. No big deal. I'm sure I got a dozen of those sitting around somewhere. This plug right here that goes to the, uh, the TIU, I do not have. But there was a dealer there that said he does have one at his house. He's willing to bring it tomorrow. So big thank you to Ike's Trains. I greatly appreciate that. Hopefully it's the one that I need. I will be very happy. Got these two, uh, got these two valve gear assemblies here for my 736 Berkshire that had a very unfortunate wreck the other day and broke one of them. So might as well just get a matching set left and right. And to make it an even 20 bucks, got a taxi cab. Goes in with the layout, 1957 Chevy, so still period correct to my layout. But here's what I was not expecting to get, and I am so glad I did because I never actually thought that I would get one of these because the prices of these are out of control lately. Got this gorgeous, gorgeous set here. Big thank you to Brady's Trains. This man came to sell. Got the 1947 version of the 671 turbine. Matching tender. It looks like the steps on the tender were replaced, but it was done very well. You almost can't even tell unless you look really close on it. And I got these gorgeous passenger cars. I've always loved these. And also have New Jersey names on them. Chatham, Maplewood, Hillside. All of the lights do work. They are not perfect. They, they do need to be cleaned up, but all of it's there. So I'm always down for a project. The engine does run. It's very sluggish, so probably just needs, uh, you, you know, your basic brushes, oil and greasing, that whole bit. So we're gonna dive into this. I'm gonna take them all apart, clean them up, and we're gonna see how they run. Now, if you've never taken one of these apart, this is probably the easiest locomotive Lionel has ever made to fix yourself. To take the shell off, you got this screw up front here. And you gotta take this back plate off of here. Once you do that, the whole thing just slides right up. The chassis is its own unit, and you can access everything right from there. All right, once you remove those, you got the short screw up front, you have the two long ones in the back. So flip it back over, and the whole shell should just slide right up, just like that. You got the, uh, got the light bulb assembly there, just careful not to break that wire. This one does not have the smoke bulb assembly in it, which that was the earlier versions. That was on the 2020s and the early 671s, if I'm correct. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But this does have the, uh, the pellet smoke unit in it. I do not have any pellets, unfortunately, and they actually uh, discontinued them. But here's what you got. This is just a weight. You got your E unit here. The E unit does cycle freely, so I'm not too worried about that. The wires, uh, they're, they're brittle, but they're not broken. I'm probably just going to rewire this engine anyway. This is not the atomic motor. The back end is similar. Pretty much the same motor that they used for everything back in the day. But you could see all of this dried up grease. Like this doesn't even feel like grease anymore. That's just like muck. And that would be why the engine is running the way it does. Very easy to fix that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you try to remove the motor, you got this plate here that should just pop right up, just like that. Obviously this thing looks like it's been serviced once before. It's got, it's got some uh, dents and scratches in it, but that's fine. But look right in there, look at all that dried up grease. 
you can tell if this thing was serviced. It was many, many years ago. Look at that. It just comes out in one big chunk. So don't be afraid to service these locomotives on your own. These are basic hand tools. Like here, you can take this whole engine apart with just a uh, flathead screwdriver. Okay, engine's done being rewired. The tender is currently on the bench being rewired. This is its first run. We got a heavy string of cars behind it. Here we are, 24 hours later, engine is all rewired, greased, oiled, put the decal on the front, rewired the tender, greased and oiled all that. Yes, I know it's supposed to be a six wheel tender, oh well, it still looks good. Passenger cars came out almost brand new, there's a couple of little dings and dents here and there, but most of it is underneath where you can't even see it, so I'm not that concerned about it. All the lights work. I actually managed to save all the original wiring inside the passenger cars. They weren't even brittle. The only things I had to rewire was the, um, the flying shoe couplers. Besides that, very minimal effort into this. Just Dawn and a toothbrush. And look at how nice these things look. This thing runs so smooth, there's not even enough voltage on the track when it's running to blow the whistle. Like here we are at 13 volts. 13 volts gets it going really good. I could drop it down to 11. Drop it down to 10. Slows down in that one corner right there and I can't figure out why. I have a uh, I have a bus wire running around this whole thing, but every single train stops right there. See, I'm trying to blow the whistle, can't get anything. A eh, little something there. Smoke works excellent, I didn't convert it. What a beautiful looking set. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this short restoration video. These passenger cars actually turned out way better than I originally expected them to. If you look them up online, they're very hard to find in this condition. Most of the time the paint's peeling off or like there's pieces broken on them. These for the most part are actually very clean and that's why I wanted to keep them as original as I could. If you're wondering how you clean post-war items like uh, passenger cars, locomotives, anything like that, blue Dawn soap, a soft bristle toothbrush, and warm water. That's all you need. You don't need any, any fancy cleaners, any polish, anything like that. This is all I've ever used, and it always turns out with really good results. So there's plenty more stuff to come soon. Now that I got the uh, DCS system, I think that's what the next video is going to be. That's a very cool item. I want to show you guys how everything works with that if you don't already know. So with that being said, like, subscribe. See you again soon.